In our previous video, we learned about the IV characteristic of a solar cell. How can we simulate this characteristic in a circuit diagram? To answer this question, we are going to look at the equivalent circuit of a solar cell. Let's start with what we learned in the previous video. Here is the IV characteristic of a solar cell. We can note the VOC and the ISC that we described before. We can notice a few things about this plot. There is an exponential characteristic and it is offset negatively somehow. So how can we represent this as a circuit model? Those of you with an electrical engineering background may already realize that this resembles the characteristic of a diode and that is exactly correct. A solar cell is in fact a diode and if the solar cell were in the dark it would act electrically just like any other diode. However, illumination of the solar cell is what offsets it as we can see here. So let's take a look at how to model this electrically. Here you can see the so-called single diode model for a solar cell. There is a lot going on here, so let's move through our schematic step by step. The first thing you may notice is the current source on the left side of the diagram. This represents the photocurrent generated through illumination, which we call here IPH. Ideally, we want to pass the photocurrent to our load represented in purple on the right. Next, we see a diode with a current ID passing through it. This represents the solar cell diode characteristics in the dark you will notice that this current is essentially a sink for the current. Some current will pass through the diode and this current does not reach the load. This actually represents the recombination that occurs in the solar cell and you will learn a lot about this in the coming weeks in the semiconductor physics videos. Next we see two resistors. RP, the shunt resistance, and RS is the series resistance. These two resistors are there because the solar cell is not an ideal diode. We will look into the sources of these resistances in the next slide. Lastly, in our schematic, we see our load. We can see a current across it, I, and we see the voltage, V. From this circuit, we can then solve the equation of determining I as a function of V. I won't go into the full derivation, but you can find it in chapter 9 of the textbook. But let's take a closer look at this equation. Here you can see the equation for the single diode model. I0 is the dark saturation current. There will be a whole video on the importance of this parameter in the future. N is the diode ideality factor. In general, this factor is set to 1, in this equation representing an ideal diode. Q is the elemental charge of an electron. K is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature. Otherwise, we can see the values for the photocurrent and the series and shunt resistance. However, one final interesting note is that we can find I in this equation. This makes the equation implicit, meaning that it cannot be solved algebraically. You will notice that this term only appears next to the series resistance term, so if we model the solar cell as ideal, this term would disappear and make the equation easier to solve. So let's take a look at how these curves can be changed due to these resistances. First, let's examine the series resistance RS. RS is caused by bulk resistances of the semiconductor materials and the metal electrodes. The contact resistance between the semiconductor and the metal also influences RS. You can see from this plot that as we increase our RS from 0 up to 10 ohms, the solar cell goes from a diode characteristic to an almost linear characteristic. We can easily see that increasing the, the series resistance decreases the maximum output power, even though the VOC and the ISC stay the same. 
Therefore, Rs only affects the fill factor of our solar cell. Next, we look at the shunt resistance. If you remember, this resistance is parallel to our load, so we actually want it to be as large as possible. Otherwise, it acts as a sink for the current that will reduce power to the load. A reduced shunt resistance is caused by leakages across the PN junctions around the edges of the solar cell or defects, pinholes and impurity precipitates in the semiconductor material. You can see here that if we have a shunt resistance of zero, our solar cell hardly produces any power at all. As we increase our shunt resistance by orders of magnitude, we can see the shape of a curve return to that of an idle diode. Now this single diode model is good for electrical simulating a solar cell. However, sometimes it is insufficient. For this purpose, we can increase the model's complexity. Here you can see a very similar schematic to the single diode model, but now there are two diodes. The reason for this is that there are two sources for current sink in a solar cell and they need to be modeled separately. Diode 1 represents the dark diffusion current. This diode has an ideality factor of 1. Diode 2 represents the dark recombination current and will have an ideality factor greater than 1. Many times the second diode will have an ideality factor of 2, but we will learn in a future video that this is only true for very specific cases and is not always appropriate. When we have this new model, we get a more complex equation. The only main changes are that we have two separate dark saturation currents and two separate ideality factors. So now let's recap. We first looked at the single diode model and showed all aspects of the equivalent circuit and resultant equation. Then we briefly took a look at the more complex two diode model where one diode represents the dark diffusion current and the other represents the dark saturation current. Now you can simulate and understand how a solar cell will interact with an external circuit.